everyone. Welcome to graduation of the class of 2019. At this time, we would ask that everyone stay standing for the Star Spangled Banner, led by music director Ray Ponty and his band. <laughs> situation all gates are open and the gate behind us is also open Brian Kiley Doug Ortenzi John Roback and the crew the stadium and grounds look amazing the tech the sound and the mics are working fine thank you great job to everyone who helped out put this special day together welcome where is Matt Codman on his way to college in Vermont for meteorology we will see him on TV someday well, he sent me a video of himself doing the weather forecast for today. You're spot on, Matt. Call me in January and help me with the snow days. And where is Kathleen Lovell? Kathleen, um, can I borrow a few bucks? Did you clean up at scholarship night or what? Over $100,000 was awarded to our graduates, not just to Kathleen. However, it takes time perseverance, and stick to -itiveness. Kathleen, you are a lovely, bright, articulate young woman. Take this world by the tail. <laughs> Down at Central School in kindergarten, there's a little prince, where I think he's a prince. It's called Joey Sinkowitz. He prances in the hallways, and he's always dressed to the nines. And he is a leader. Miss Tellis told me he's going places. I asked him, if the big bad wolf comes to Central School, what will you do? And he said, we're going to jump out the window. And his classmates, classmates were horrified. He looked and said, hey, you can see the heads walking by it. It ain't that far. And when I think of this young man, I think this is the prince of Central, uh, not of Central, of the junior senior high school, Sal Clifford, the prince of the man bun, and a smile that doesn't stop in a future teacher. Where are the Smith twins? Girls, I told Mr. Leonard the first time I saw you and saw you run up and down this field, you can't teach speed. You're fast and kind and, kind and friendly, and you can't teach that. It was doubly nice to have you at EB. And one more thing, girls, you can't wear slippers your whole life. <laughs> Sarah O'Brien, you want to be a teacher? I never saw that coming. But you're going to be great. And when you begin, come on back. We'll find a spot for you.
And Liam Labanji, going to Bryant. Excellent university, top-notch education, great baseball program, and right down the street from my house. So Liam, if you ever need a hand or a good meal, call me. I'll take you to Blackie's next door to Bryant. Great burgers, and it won't cost you anything, just uh, maybe a couple tickets, Red Sox, behind home plate, <laughs> sixth throw back. Like how I eased into that, Dr. Williams? It's a very ancient saying, but a true and honest thought, that if you become a teacher by your pupils, you'll be taught. As a teacher, I have learned, and you'll forgive me if I boast, because I now become an expert on the subject we as teachers like most, getting to know you. Those were lyrics from Getting to Know You from The King and I. I hope Mickey Lasley is here. I know Candace is. Come on, drama. I want The King and I. But wasn't the Adams family fun? And Anna Anacone, you are great. I don't know what the heck it's called that you will be studying at school, except that you will make Broadway productions authentic. That is so cool. I have about 20 more pages, because this class is super friendly and warm. But this morning, as I was at Mass, I saw a couple walk in with a 10-day-old baby. And I thought, that's what you're thinking about today as you look at your children, our students, in front of you. The first day you held your baby in your hands, the first day you let them out of your arms into kindergarten, the first day you stopped their tears, the first day they drove their car, and now to graduation, you'll always be their babies. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. You have terrific kids. La Joanne O'Brien, best wishes, best of luck, happy retirement. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, school committee, Dr. Williams, Ms. Noyes, teachers and students, by the authority granted to me by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the Massachusetts Department of Secondary and Elementary Education, let the 219 commencement begin. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you, Superintendent Legault. At this time, I'd like to call the senior pre president of the class of 2019, Marissa McCarthy. Good afternoon, and welcome to the class of 2019's graduation. Thank you, Superintendent Legault, Assistant Superintendent Williams, members of the school committee, faculty, and staff. I would also like to take this opportunity to thank some other important people in my life. Mom, Dad, Ella, and the rest of my family. Without all your support and encouragement, I wouldn't have made it this far. I am very thankful for you all and everything you have done for me. I would also like to thank all my teachers that I've had this far. I would especially like to thank Mrs. Principe, Mrs. O'Brien, Mrs. Ross, and Ms. Hulk. You all have played an important role in my high school career, and I am thankful for that. Finally, to my best friends, Tommy, Perry, Katie, Kirsten, Brooke, Rachel, and Jess, I have shared great memories with all of you that I will cherish forever, and I love you all for that. Now, on behalf of the class of 2019, I would like to thank our class advisors, Mrs. O'Brien and Mrs. Principe. You two have put in so much work into our class these past four years, and without you two, we wouldn't have had as many successful events as we did. We are all grateful that we had you two as our class advisors. I would like to call them both up here to accept a gift from, for all your hard work that you put in.
Now to my classmates. Congratulations, we finally made it through high school, a moment we have all been waiting for. We all worked so hard and that hard work has definitely paid off. I hope you all will walk away with two things from this East Bridgewater High School, a diploma and memories that will last a lifetime. For a lot of us, our memories go all the way back to the Central School and the Middle School, from Young Author Day in third grade, to Camp Orndale in fifth grade, to D.A.R.E. graduation in sixth grade. We have all watched each other grow into mature and responsible men and women. Always remember that this group of people has watched you throughout the past 12 years become who you are today. We have made a lot of memories throughout our years, from being the first class to take on this school since seventh grade, as well through activities such as March Madness and Homecoming. If you all didn't know, we won Best Hallway and Float at three homecomings, and we were the class that always tried our hardest at the lip syncs during the pep rallies. It is our small community though, that has given us endless memories and shaped us into the people we are today. So many memories, though, come from the multi multitude of accomplishments our class has had. A lot of you know we won two state championships our sophomore year in football and soccer. We have accomplished a lot more than just that, though, and I feel a lot of these accomplishments have been overlooked. If you didn't know this year, the girls' cross-country team defeated Norwell and won their first social league title ever. Boys Indoor Track won the Division Five State Relay, which was a huge accomplishment for them. Also, Emily Keene and Dan O'Shea came up with the great idea to fix up the old boards in the weight room, and now they look brand new. Jessica Ricketts received a gold medal award, which she has worked hard for over the past few years. Additionally, the band and chorus students have put on many performances throughout their high school career, and all shows have truly been amazing. Finally, Many students in our grade helped get a lacrosse program started at the high school, even when multiple people thought it was an impossible idea. The lacrosse program is now flourishing with over 40 kids in both the boys and girls program. The boys also made playoffs last year for the first time. <coughs> Those are just a few of the accomplishments that our grade has had. If I were to name all of them, we would all be here for a while. I think our grade has left a great mark on the East Bridgewater school system. I hope you all realize that today is a new chapter in our lives. Even though one journey ends today, another new journey is beginning. I'd like to wish you all luck in the future, whether you are going to college, into the military, or joining the workforce. I know you all have bright futures ahead, and I can't wait to see what life after high school brings you. Good luck and congratulations. I would now like to bring up the class treasurer, Dylan Boss. I'm the treasurer for the class of 2019. First, I would like to start by thanking my family and friends for getting me here. I don't know where I'd be without you. Thank you, guys. I love you all. And now I'd like to take the time to congratulate my fellow graduates here. I don't know. I really don't know where I'd be without all of you. I'm going to miss all of you. And I'd like to thank all my teachers who helped me get here. I love you all also. I don't know if I love you more, though. I don't know. And now I'd like to call up the salutatorian, Kalaipi Tarzi. Good afternoon. I'd like to start off by thanking everyone who has come to support the East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School Class of 2019 on this momentous occasion. There's a long list of people I would like to personally thank for getting me to where I am today, but I will keep it short and just recognize those who have been there for me since day one. Mom, no matter what I do, you have always been my biggest supporter. Even when I seem to get annoyed by you taking too many pictures or being a bit embarrassing, 
Just know that I'm so grateful to have a mom that cares about me as much as you do. Dad, I thoroughly believe that you are the reason I'm standing here today giving this speech. You have always pushed me to do my best in school, and even though you told me you don't care about my grades, I still wanted to impress you. Brian, although I have not known you for my entire life, I am so grateful to have someone that is like a second father to me. You have been th with me through the ups and downs, and whenever I need anything, you are always there for me. Holly, you have been by my side since first grade, and I am the luckiest person in the world to be able to call you my best friend. You are like a sister to me, and I really don't know what I'm going to do when you're 152 miles away from me next fall. I know I would not have been able to do it without all of you. I love you. On this day, our high school graduation, we celebrate the hard work and dedication we have all put into our education for the past 12 plus years. Although many of us has followed different paths to get to where we are today, we have one place that I feel brings us all together. You might think I'm talking about the school, but I'm actually referring to the place that most of us know as PMEDS. Peaceful Meadows holds a special place in all of our hearts. As we were maturing into adulthood, we were able to get our licenses, our first cars, and the newfound freedom that came with them. Living in a small town, however, it can be difficult sometimes to figure out what to do with this privilege. Driving around aimlessly, arguing with friends about what to do is only tolerable for so long. But the one suggestion that no one can turn down, or at least I know I can't, is ice cream. As soon-to-be graduates, we have the power to make our own de decisions, similar to how we are able to choose which ice cream flavor suits us. Maybe you're looking for something simple and classic, like vanilla or chocolate, or you want to be adventurous and try an out-of-the-box flavor, like my personal favorite, coconut chocolate almond. Or if you are just a little offbeat and want orange sherbet, no matter what you are feeling or why you are there, it always hits the spot. Ice cream heals a broken heart, brightens your mood, and fuels your studies. There have been too many times that I have gone to Peaceful Meadows when I should have been home studying or doing homework. No matter what, though, the work always got done, and the ice cream was worth staying up a little later. This ice cream shop has been a staple as the place to go after any school event. It has been a tradition since freshman year for the bandies to go after every concert and music event. It was the perfect place to go to celebrate a victory for the Vikings, like when the cross-country team beat Norwell for the first time in 22 years, or the cheer team won the title of state champions. It also helped to cheer yourself up after a tough AP test, or to celebrate the end of the school play. Just the other night at the awards ceremony, I looked across the audience to Tori as she mouthed, PMEDS after this? I have heard that question too many times to count. Not only do I thank Peaceful Meadows for its ice cream, but also sig the significance that the parking lot holds. We have our first memories of going there as little kids and eating our ice cream as we watched the cows with fascination. Since then, I have made countless memories with my friends, especially the posse. Scream singing our favorite songs, dancing in the parking lot long after everyone has left and the store is closed, and crying together thinking about how much we'll miss each other next year. These are just some of the moments I know I will never forget. Every time I go there, I always run into someone I know, whether it be a familiar face behind the counter or someone I see in line. I hope even after we go away to college, into the workforce, into service, or whatever else we have planned, we will always remember to turn, and I hope in, I run into all of you again. As we go through our life along our separate ways, I'm sure I will find a different ice cream shop and try new exciting flavors, but none will compare to the place just across the East Bridgewater line filled with so many memories, like nothing will compare to the memories we made in this very building. Thank you, and good luck to the graduating class of 2019.
Now it is my honor to introduce the class vice president, Giovanni Cacciatore. Good afternoon, everybody. How about those bees, eh? Before I introduce our next speaker, I'd just like to say thank you to my parents and my family. I wouldn't have been able to do it without you. And congratulations to everybody here. It's been a great 12 years, and I know everyone will do well in the future. Now, it's my great honor to introduce our next speaker, a valedictorian who's going to Boston University, Sarah Strassel. Good afternoon, everyone, and congratulations to all my fellow classmates. We've been through quite the journey over the past four years, and I'm so proud that we've made it to the end together. Our time at East Bridgewater High School was one full of beautiful memories and a lot of ups and downs. The graduating class of 2019 is the first to make it all the way through the sixth grades at EVJSHS, and our micro will remain on the school for many years into the future. As we move on from this phase in our lives, I hope we can take with us the lessons we've learned in our four years of high school and, for the vast majority of us, our 12 years in East Bridgewater schools. To think that I won't be sharing my first day of college with the friends that have been alongside me since my first, gave, first day of kindergarten is a little scary, but I know that each of us will be moving on to bigger and better things in the fall. None of us would be here without the help of our families, our teachers, our coaches, and all the other mentors we've met during our academic journey thus far. I would personally like to thank a few people who are some of the main reasons I am standing here speaking to you today. First and foremost, I would like to say thank you to my dad. Thank you for pushing me to be the most successful I can be and for teaching me that I can accomplish pretty much anything I set my mind to. And of course, thank you for playing Jeopardy with me when I'm supposed to be doing my homework. Second, I would like to say thank you to Mr. Siddiqui, the only person I've met who loves math more than I do. Thank you for teaching my peers and me the importance of learning to be wrong. I know this might sound pretty backwards, but learning to embrace failure and create growth out of my mistakes was a more important lesson to me than all the math skills I've learned in my three years of class with you, except for maybe my one steps. I can't wait to make you proud of your alma mater, and I hope someday to become even half the mathematician you are. Finally, I would like to say the biggest thank you to all of you, my classmates, for making high school unforgettable. From our very first freshman homecoming to our senior prom, I can't say enough how much joy I felt as a part of the class of 2019. Throughout my high school career, I spent a lot of time doing math, a lot. While I personally find math to be methodical and stress relieving, the process of solving an unfamiliar problem can be quite the daunting task. However, I've come to discover that it's your attitude towards the problem that determines its difficulty. Because as Mr. Siddiqui says, all math is the same. When I begin a math problem, I start by figuring out what the question is really asking me to do. Word problems can have a lot of extra, unnecessary details, so learning to get to the bottom of the question and realizing the key words is vital to eventually finding a solution. After determining what I need to do, my next step is to listen to the question. There's quite a difference between understanding what's expected and actually carrying out the actions needed to make progress. Keep an open mind and allow for the question to provide guidance. As I, make, as I work my way further through the problem, one issue I tend to encounter is the feeling of being stuck. I feel like there's no way I can finish the problem, and often I move on to a new question to try and redeem myself. The feeling of being trapped by my own doings is one I experience all the time, whether it be while doing math, writing an essay, or playing tennis. In situations like these, the most important thing to do is be confident in the work you've done. Trusting that you're on the right path is the only way to get to the end. Even if the path takes an unexpected turn, as long as you persevere, the end is never fully out of sight. While the journey to success may take much longer than expected, and if you've ever spent, spent hours doing one problem while everyone else has moved on, you know what I mean. The feeling of finally putting a box or circle around the answer is a moment filled with pride and relief. No matter how many attempts it took to reach the right answer, you can always learn something from the process you took to solve the problem. 
Oftentimes, it's almost better to be wrong once or twice. Failure is not a sign of defeat, but a sign of growth. Rising above the mistakes you make shows great strength and character. Our futures are determined solely by our solutions to problems, so remember to listen to the people surrounding you as you navigate the frightening, frightening adult world. Today is about being proud of all the problems you've solved, all the questions you've answered, and all the times you've been wrong. As we answer the question that four years of high school has asked us, I want you all to remember to live life one moment at a time. Spend your time focusing on what's happening in the present, present and don't get caught up about what might or could happen. If you feel stuck, slow down and allow yourself to be guided. Take a minute to appreciate everything you've learned in high school. Embrace this moment right here and remind yourself that change is always possible, no matter how complicated things can get. A best friend of mine told me that it's always worth it to go for what you want without worrying too much about the consequences. So if you have a dream, make it happen. To sum it all up, failure is an integral part of shaping our futures, and you only really begin to reach your maximum potential when your thinking becomes instantaneous. I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors, and I'm so proud of everything we've accomplished together. Thank you. And now our concert band will play the selection, Pirates of the Caribbean.
Good afternoon, and my sincerest congratulations to the class of 2019. It's my pleasure today to introduce our commencement speaker. Alexandra Nordberg was the valedictorian of East Bridgewater's class of 2007. In 2011, Alex graduated from Boston University, summa cum laude, with a Bachelor of Science in Human Physiology. In 2015, she graduated from New York Medical College as a Doctor of Medicine. She then went on to serve her residency in emergency medicine at UMass Medical Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. During that time, she served as a chief resident and was president of a national resident and medical student board within the Society of Academic Emergency Medicine. In 2018, Alex graduated from her residency and is now finishing an ultrasound fellowship in point of care emergency medicine ultrasound at UMass and will graduate at the end of June of this year. Alex has already accepted an academic position in the Department of Emergency Medicine at UMass Medical Center, and she'll start working as a full-time faculty attending July 1 of this year. And on a more personal note, and maybe my favorite, last June, Alex married Chris Lupe after being together since high school, and they met during marching band. So please give a warm welcome to today's distinguished guest speaker, Dr. Alexandra Nordberg Lupe. Thank you for that very nice introduction. It's my pleasure and honor to be back here today addressing the class of 2019. So in emergency medicine, you never know who your next patient is going to be. 24-7, 365, we're here for whoever's having a bad day and needs to come through our doors. And when you have a critically ill patient come in, your mind is racing, and you as a human can inevitably only think of so many things at one time. As in many other career avenues, medicine has advanced over the past century. We have algorithms, or mantras if you will, to follow when things are undifferentiated, not going to plan, or when they are just plain going badly. The first day of your intern year, you're out of medical school when that critically ill patient comes in. At first, it is terrifying, and you seem to fumble and nervously try to get your brain to have coherent thoughts. Meanwhile, the attending, a more seasoned and trained doc, is standing behind you, guiding interventions, and you tend to think, man, how am I ever going to become that? But with training and much supervision, you develop a pattern. Every emergency medicine resident has these mantras drilled into their head over and over again, to eventually it becomes a knee-jerk reaction. First, we start with the basics, the ABCs, airway, breathing, and circulation. I realize this is not a lecture, but it's pretty straightforward. If the patient can't breathe through their mouth, can't breathe at all, or they don't have adequate circulation perfusing their body, they're not going to do well. And I initially always thought about how complex everything was. How many decisions, how many equations, how resilient and frail the human body is at the exact same time. And yet, the more I do this, the more it becomes clear. When you have a problem in front of you that needs attention now, the simpler it truly becomes. You have to start somewhere. So you develop a plan, but stay in the moment to be able to process new experiences as they come, so that if the plan needs to change, you can adjust accordingly. So you start with the ABCs. And maybe these won't be your exact ABCs, but I'm talking about your general knowledge and life skill base. You started learning them when you were in preschool, and it's really these true basic fundamentals that everything else will grow from. You are now well past learning those ABCs and ready to move on and start a new exciting chapter in your life. And that's what everyone calls it, so exciting. And it is, it is exciting, but it can also be a little scary and overwhelming even, and that's okay. But you as East Bridgewater High School graduates have learned your ABCs and you can apply those concepts to each new challenge you face. Maybe you know what path you're about to set out on. Maybe you're still trying to decide. Maybe you even have a path where everything seems planned and you're ready to get started. You are newly minted adults, ready to make your own decisions, or maybe not. 
because that's a lot of responsibility all at once. Maybe you need some more guidance, some more assistance, learning or even developing your own life mantras. Whatever you want, just demand the best from yourself and start moving toward, moving forward towards that vision. And while I'm talking a lot about career and major life choices, it's equally as important to be flexible to the opportunities that life gives you. Be mindful of what you enjoy, learn to be in the moment, and appreciate what's happening around you. Don't live your life through the lens of your phone. Be open to new things. Find what you are passionate about. Maybe that means you detour away from your originally intended path. That's OK. It's OK to fumble in the beginning. I think back and wish I had a better sense of that when I was sitting in your seats. No one expects that first day intern to know everything. Otherwise, there would be no training after medical school, like there would be no need for further educational experiences after high school, be it life lessons or in the classroom. Because maybe what you thought was a fumble was another path opening up. It's wonderful to find the surprises life is going to give you if you're open to them. It almost seems a little contradicting trying to decide what you want for your future, be talking about all of that, and yet I'm up here saying just keep it simple and be flexible. I'm not going to disillusion you. It does take some planning. You pick a trade, a job, or a major, and figure out if that's how you're going to live and make your way in this world. I remember sitting in Mr. Dickey's office, who was a guidance counselor when I was in high school, looking at colleges and telling him I wanted to go to medical school someday. And here I am coming back to EV today, seemingly with a little bit of life knowledge and experiences by now to impart some words of wisdom to you. On the surface, it may look like my plan for Mr. Dickey's office went smoothly, but I can tell you it did not. But I knew what I wanted, and I went after it. People told me I was childish and hinted that soon life would make me jaded enough to move on from such dreams. But I eventually stopped learning to play the what-if game and just go for it. Make a move and see where it gets you on your path. Maybe it's forward, maybe it's not. Maybe you need to switch paths altogether. But if you want something, go for it. Just focus on making one decision at a time. So while yes, it does take some planning, don't let that part consume you. Don't focus solely on the end goal. Focus on the milestones along the way and be mindful of what experiences and opportunities make you excited. What niche do you see yourself in and make goals for yourself? Demand the best of yourself and for yourself. And when that goal seems unclear or it's daunting, impossible, or an incredibly fragile sick patient and everyone's looking at, to you, looking at you for what to do next, keep it simple. Don't overthink. Learn what makes you excited. Keep pushing forward. Go back to your ABCs. Go back to the basics for you, what you want and what your dreams are. Whatever you're about to do going forward from this afternoon, I want you to remember that whatever challenge you face, face it head on. Be open to the opportunity, make a plan, but allow for flexibility. Live in the moment and be happy. EBHS class of 2019, I wish you the best of luck in your future endeavors. And if you're ever in need of a reminder of what you can do, everyone at EBHS, myself included, is here for you and want the best for you. Congratulations to the newest edition of the EBHS alumni. And at this time, we'd ask the senior choral members to step forward to sing a selection, Days of Our Lives. Oh. 
Is this the one? Okay. This one? Okay. Hello, everyone. And as all of you know, I'm the secretary of the class of 2019. I just want to take a quick minute to thank my family, especially my mom, dad, Karen, Zach, and Kirsten, and my friends. Thank you guys for everything. And before I introduce our next speaker, I just want to call Marissa and Perry up quickly to do the roller coaster one last time as a grade. guys and now it's with my great honor to introduce our assistant principal Miss Noise. Thank you Key. What a beautiful day we've been blessed with here today. This morning when I woke up and the fog was uh, five feet th thick I said, oh boy, this could be a challenge for us. But with a little help from above, we have the beautiful sign, sun shining among us. Superintendent Legault, Dr. Williams, school committee, parents, family, friends, and of course, the class of 2019. This afternoon, I would like you to take away two thoughts as you leave this stage. One is opportunity, and the second is resilience. If you would, for a moment, close your eyes and envision the walk you took down the hallways of Central School and the Mitchell School last Thursday. I would like you to remember yourself at these ages, the positive energy, the feeling of being carefree and having fun. During these times, you had no idea the opportunities that would be presented to you throughout your education here at East Bridgewater. You just lived your life one day at a time without even knowing it. Okay, please open your eyes. These opportunities such as reading, writing, learning how to throw or catch a ball, memorizing lines for a play, creating projects connected to the real world, or simply painting a picture on a canvas. This helped you to be your true self. Your canvas was blank 12 years ago, and each one of you have since painted your own life's journey until this point. Within this painting, you, will, you took many opportunities that have created who you are today. Within these opportunities came choices, choices that were really good, and some we may like to take a second chance at. Your portrait might be full of bright colors that are symbols of smooth sailing times, and others that may be symbols of darker colors that represent the harder times. Yet, when blended together, these colors and images displayed your beauty of life, which allowed you to move forward to this day of a wonderful celebration. Class of 2019, that is what we call the quality of resilience. All of us at some point need skills of resilience to survive in life. Your opportunities to prevail over time, difficulties, darkest moments, and the most challenging times will always be present. When one perseveres and even embraces life setbacks or moments of impossibility, this is when you push yourself to be in a better place than you ever were before. This is when you have to look at the small things in your day and give gratitude for what is right in your life. So as you enter your next chapter of life, whether it is in the workforce and not knowing what you might be doing on that first day of work, college when you feel like you have studied more than anyone for an exam and still received a lower grade than what you thought you deserved, or you're getting ready for the armed forces when you feel like you never made it to the end of boot camp. Dig deep 
and look for that resilient quality and know you will make it. This second canvas begins now, and again it is blank. Take the time to continue to create a beautiful, productive, positive masterpiece. I wish you all the best as you continue to embrace the multitudes of opportunities that lie before you and put yourself in an even better place than you already are. Always remember at first, if you don't succeed, try and try again. Always have a sense of humor, work harder than you ever have, and have a passion that inspires you to make this world a better place. Thank you, class of 2019, for allowing me to be your leader this year. To part, your painting is here. East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School will forever be in your hearts. Your prom dance moves are pretty smooth. And a shout out to my favorite hat club. I really got enjoyed getting to know you. Have a great one. Thank you. And we, before we move to the next part of our program, at this time I would like to thank the following people who are shining stars to make this beautiful ceremony happen. The Bridgewater Savings Bank for our beautiful American flags as these students take this away to show a sign of how lucky we are for our freedom. To stop and shop for keeping us all hydrated today. Doug Hortensi and the EB custodial staff for making our school and grounds look amazing. To my secretaries, Diane Ashey and Jen Furia for the countless working hours behind the scenes. For Karen Clifford, the head of guidance, for being a support to me through getting my first through my first graduation. All of the teachers that are here today taking your time to continue supporting our students as you do every single day. To our IT team, Mr. Shea, our class marshals, our arch bearers, and our high school chorus and band. And at this time, the moment we have been waiting for, diplomas. <laughs> Abby, Noel, and Nicole. Juliana, Christina, Barris. Brooke Christine Bassett. Cameron Daniel Brew. Matthew Robert Condon. Calliope Louise Tarsi. <laughs> Dylan Thomas Voss. <laughs> Giovanni Cacciatore Jr. Marissa Catherine McCarthy. Katie Elizabeth Smith. Sarah Patricia Strassel.
Hunter Cole Dempsey. <laughs> Rachel Helen Dutcher. Courtney Marie Dye. Mackenzie Ann Eldridge. Jake Riley Graham. Jacob Roger Grindle. Thank you. Cassandra Elizabeth Hall. Thank you. Caitlin Rose Hanley. Alyssa Ann Hoyt. Yeah. Thank you. Ryan James Hoover. Yeah. Jessica Mary Jacobson. Amelia Margaret Keefe. <laughs> Casey John Lang. Liam Allen Lavangi. Thank you. Kathleen Marie Lovell. Congratulations. Thank you. Nicholas Angelo Mason. Noah Lee Mason. Victoria Joan O'Day. Olivia Michelle Parsons. Jessica Elaine Ricketts. Congratulations. Hallie Elizabeth Ross.
Holly Grace Rowe. Nicholas Sakosha Scott. Kirsten Marie Smith. Perry Lynn Snow. Colleen Meredith Sullivan. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Kylie Mermaid Thompson, whose di diploma will be presented by Marie Principe. Michaela Julia Vargas. Thank you. Kelly Ann Wilburn. Tyler John Wolf. David Gerald Adeo Jr. <laughs> Hannah Lee Appleton. <laughs> Jaden Marie Baptista. Gabriella Macy Barretti. Madison Marjorie Bradbury. Sydney May Bradbury. Tyler Robert Brazil. Stephen Mitchell Brown. Thank you. Thank you. Samuel Anthony Carey. Danielle Kaushi.
John Salvatore Clifford. <laughs> Hannah Gabrielle Connell. Stephen Christopher Corsheen. <laughs> Danielle Nicole Cristaldi. Thank you. Emily Mackenzie Danielson. Lillian Jean Danielson. Matthew William Davis. Megan Elizabeth DeRosia. George Edward Dixon the fourth. <laughs> Lindsay Marie Dolan. Sarah Marie Donovan. Evan Lewis Dyer. <laughs> Olivia Martha Easton. Raymond Frederick Edwards. Joseph David Eisenman. Anthony Michael Fabrizio. Nicholas Thomas Fabrowski. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sean Joseph Fagan. Thank you. Chad Robert Ferrin.
Kaylee Rachel Farron. Angelina Rose Flood. Andrew Harrison Garfield. <laughs> Megan Marie Gelfi. Her diploma is being presented by her grandfather, George McCabe. Danielle Paige Glidden. Abigail Jean Greiner. Bushra Hani Hindaya. Emily Olivia Horseman. Cameron Ethan Howard. Victoria Ashley Hunter. John Edward Hussey, Jr. Rachel Francis Jacobson. <laughs> John Eric Januskis. Johnson. <laughs> Shannon Nicole Joseph. Sarah Marie Junkins. Brian Landers Catillus. <laughs> Riley Robert Catillus. <laughs> Emily Rose Keen.
Marissa Page Lawler. Cody Griffin Litchfield. Shane Michael Litchfield. Norlina Susan Lovett. Carissa Kathleen Lynch. <laughs> Kevin Patrick Lynch. <laughs> Steven Tyler McMurdo. Kobe Brian Maycumber. Joshua Patrice Mayhew. Joshua Galveo Mendez. Zachary Robert Merry. Derek James Milligan. Angel Lewis Morales. Christina Jean Moran. Caitlin Lee Morse. David Wayne Nelson. Jared Thomas Norton. Sarah Marie O'Brien. Daniel John O'Shea.
Cole James Packard. Patrick James Powers. Soraya Reyes. Dela Anayo Andre Rowe. Alexander Michael Rico. Kelly Ann Ricketts. Eva Isabel Roderick. Thomas Henry Ross. <laughs> Serenity Simone Sands. James Peter Santos. <laughs> Suad Asad Sassin. Maggie Madison Sewell. Yeah. Riley Scott Shaw. Nicholas William Simmons. Bridget Abby Steen. Emily Elizabeth Sussman. Sarah Elizabeth Talabak. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Look at the high school taking you up. Molly Deal Thompson. Michael James Ward. I'm sorry, John Ward. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Ariana Joel Williams. Aubrey Danae York. And at this time, I'd like to ask Marissa McCarthy, president of the class of 2019, to come forward for the passing of the gal. There you go. There you go. I would like to call up Nick McDermott, the president of the class of 2020, to accept this gal. Thank you, Marissa. I accept this gavel on behalf of the class of 2020. Now, I want to congratulate the 2019 class. I'm a little nervous. You guys made it. Uh, this class set a great example for the junior class and all the future classes of East Bridgewater Junior Senior High School. Uh, I wish you all the best of luck in your future endeavors. I know you will all find great success in the future. Thank you all for coming to celebrate the class of 2019. Today truly is a great day to be a Viking. Thank you. And at this time, we'll have our junior marshals lead the class in the turning of the tassel. Please stand. Please stand. 